Now we'll do that more when we get into the section or course on uh, bank feeds. We'll basically build our books in essence from the transactions from the bank. Although it's not a full service accounting system, it totally makes sense to do that because it's easy <laughs> to do in certain situations. So if you have all of your transactions that are just uh, electronic transfers that you're paying for for the expense side, and if your deposit side are all electronic or all transactions from like gig work or something like that, you might be able to do your entire bookkeeping system just from getting the information directly from the bank. But there's gonna be a lot of wrenches that get thrown into that system. Anything that's accrual based will kind of mess things up. So if I go back to the balance sheet, if you have to deal with accounts receivable, that's gonna mess things up. If you have to deal with inventory, that's gonna mess up uh, your system. Prepaid insurance is gonna mess up your system. The furniture and fixture often will mess up the system. If you do accounts payable, it might mess things up. Sales tax also complicates the things uh, as well. And the type of income that you're generating will also make it more difficult on the revenue side of things. We'll talk more about that when we get to the bank feed course or section. Now, the other misconception I think people often have is thinking that the, the reconciling process is the bank reconciliation. So in other words, when I reconcile, what happens is I, I go over here and then if we have the bank transactions on and we're pulling the information in from the bank, notice that, that we can either be building our books from the bank transactions or we might be doing the entries on our side and then using the bank transactions to match to what we've already done, in which case the bank transactions would basically be helping us with the bank reconciliation process because now the bank transactions would just be a double check that we have entered uh, the information into the system. Now, when we go into the reconciliation here, what we would do, and we'll do this in a future presentations, we, we would get started with the bank reconciliation and the reconciliation will allow us to basically tick and tie what's on our bank statement to what is on the books. And once we get the reconciliation down to zero, meaning there's, there's we, we've tick and tied everything on the bank statement onto our books then the, we're done with the bank reconciliation process but oftentimes people kind of leave it there they forget that the end result is action actually a bank reconciliation report which will take the ending balance as of the the point in time in this case the end of january and compare it to our book balance and show us the difference which would be the outstanding checks and the outstanding deposits. So the general idea when we do the bank reconciling process is we're just gonna take each transaction that's on our bank statement and then tie it out to each transaction that is on our books. And if it's on the bank statement, it should be in our books unless there's an error on the bank side, which isn't typically the case. And if it's not, then we would add it to our books and then if it's on our books, but it's not on the bank statement, it might not be an error because it might be an outstanding check or deposit that we know about the bank doesn't know about. So that means that if we tick and tie everything on the bank statement onto our books, we might still have some things that are unticked that are on our books that aren't on the bank. And we can still reconcile because the reconciliation process will say there's a zero difference between the cleared balances. But the report that will be generated will show those unchecked amounts as the difference, the reconciling items. Uh, and so we'll, that's what we'll do basically in future presentations. We'll go through the bank reconciliation for the first two months. And we'll see that the first month in January is often a little bit more complex. And then once you have the first month done in February, uh, it should be a little bit easier and we can do it more smoothly. So the bottom line is this, the bank reconciliations are huge. It's a huge internal control. Every company, big, small, should be doing uh, the bank reconciliations. The bank feeds can help with the bank reconciliations. And if you're building your books entirely from the bank feeds, the bank feeds will make the reconcil the reconciliation will be easy, really easy to do. Uh, but the bank feeds don't exactly just remove the need to do reconciliations. Unless maybe, again, if you're doing the reports the books directly all completely from the bank feeds but even then i would still do the reconciliation 
you know, because it's just two clicks to do it. You can, you can, you're, you're basically double checking that you haven't entered things twice or that you haven't entered something. But in any case, the ending balance should tie out exactly to what's on your books at any given time, if that were uh, the case. So, so the bank feeds, you'd still want to do the bank reconciliations. And when you're done with the bank reconciling process, note that there will be reports, bank reconciliation reports, which are really what the end result is. Everything that you didn't check off will generate a report showing the difference between what's on our books as of a point in time, the end of the month typically, and what's on the bank statement as of a point in time. And if we get that done exactly, then we have confidence not only about the big ending balance, but, but about the entire, all the transactions in the system. And that's important to be able to explain to people because again, a lot of people just think you're just trying to reconcile cash because cash is important in and of itself. And it could be people could steal cash and whatnot. But like I say, you want to be able to say, hey, look, no, this is about the whole, the whole accounting system and giving a double check, an internal control on the whole thing, the whole income statement, basically, we're getting some assurance by doing this reconciliation process. If somebody has their books in QuickBooks and they've done proper bank reconciliations, meaning they haven't forced an adjustment in the bank reconciliation process, a plug, a journal entry, then my confidence on the bookkeeping has gone up hugely. Like I have way more confidence in the financial statements. So you could still have errors. Things might not be posted to the right place. Could be transactions that are wrong, but you are way, way better than if you didn't do bank reconciliations and if you didn't use accounting software at all.